droopy headlight covers on your NA Miata. Stick around, I'll show you how to fix it. Let's go ahead and fix these droopy headlight covers. That's a big gap right there. We'll go ahead and fix that up. To fix those droopy headlight covers, all you have to do is reach back here and just pull up a little bit. That'll reset them. Then we can drop the hood and check the fit. Yeah, much better. Easy fix, doesn't cost you a thing. When we bought this car, I noticed that the horn wasn't working. You'd hit the button, you could hear the relay, but you couldn't hear anything else. And I thought the horn was broken. Then we went to look at it, and we had that wire stuck in there. There was no horn at all. So here's a little clip of us actually putting in a new horn. Now these are kind of like those little hella horns. It has a high and a low tone. We ended up just putting in the uh, high tone for now. There's not a lot of room in there, but we're going to make a custom bracket for that and have both tones in there. Alright, on this clip right here you can see I'm taking a little bit of 400 grit uh, sandpaper and trying to get these contacts cleaned up. The window switches weren't working at all in the car so we're trying to fix that up a little bit I know that this is like a hodgepodge of different clips and it is it, it's that's exactly what it is we're doing that whole social distancing and uh, trying to stay away from everybody I'm working from home uh, trying to just edit up some of these clips for you guys just so you have something to watch but some of these are just throwaway clips that we had and I decided just to put them into uh, one video so you guys can actually have them here I'm actually uh, putting the pieces back together, those little uh, brass contacts. They just fit in there, they just fall right in. Then you put the top on there like so, and then it just clips together. Which is actually, it's pretty nice that it just kind of works. It's not really a, a difficult thing. Unfortunately, uh, after we put this together, the window regulator on the passenger side only goes down about halfway or so. As you'll hear, uh, we did a voiceover for that, but we didn't really film that. Uh, we just need to get new motors uh, and window regulators. I'm going to try to clean up the window regulators. Got some new bushings that are going to be in an upcoming video. Got that from uh, Moss Motors. And we're going to try that, but uh, I think I need a whole new motor on the driver's side. But we shall see. All right, so we found out that the switches actually work after we cleaned them all up and everything, but it's actually the window regulators that aren't working. We went to go roll down the window, as you probably just saw, and it rolls down about halfway, and that's all it's got on the passenger side. The driver's side doesn't even move at all. So that kind of, you know, cuts the workout for us. We can do a little bit more with that and just replace those regulators and get some working windows again. When it comes to street cred, looks are everything. So what do you do when your paint looks like this? What you're seeing here is delamination of the clear coat. And this is actually the base, the base paint that you have that actually has clear coat over it. Um, a lot of people don't realize it's a two-step process. you got your base coat and your clear coat. Clear coat's what makes everything shiny. But this one's all delaminating, which means it's just peeling off and just looking nasty. It's got like a million rock chips, which is just terrible. And then even, uh, even the part that isn't that bad. Let's see if I can zoom in and get this for you so you can see it. Yeah, you see those bumps? Like, even the part that the clear coat isn't bad, it's still, this paint is just totally wrecked. This is the before, and then we'll show you the after. 
and then you'll see the difference on this. And all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sand this down just to make sure this texture is gone. Because I tell you what, it's like you can't feel it, of course, but you can hear it. My fingernails catching in all those. It just it's completely trashed. It also has this area right here that's really bad. And it's got some some checking going on here. So when we come back, you'll actually see this one, and at least it'll be all uniform, if nothing else. It can be said that a car that looks like this actually has a little bit more street cred than having paint that looks like this. Because at least with this, it looks like you're actually working on it. Now what I did is I actually sanded it and this big old gnarly mess that was here is actually gone, which is nice. That those crazy marks right there, those are actually gone. You can't you can see them, but you can't feel them. And then all this is nice and smoothed in. I am still working on this, but all the area that I've uh, finished up, it's actually real smooth. I thought I was going to have to get another bumper because of this, and that was really really bad. But it actually looks pretty good, so. For a little while I'm going to be keeping this, but like I got a lot more sanding to do. And to give you an idea, that other part up here looked as bad or worse than this does right here. And it all kind of came out, so we're going to keep on going. If you have a surface that is really, really bad, you can't just expect to just spray over something, you know, when you have big marks and things in there. You, you have to take care of it. Now, you know, if you are planning on in the future painting it like I am because we're going to do a, a two-part you know base coat clear coat paint job on this um, this all has to be done anyway so I might as well just do a little bit of it now to get it completely perfect and completely smooth we could just go over this you know some of the low spots with a uh, little bit of like a skim coat of a uh, of filler but I don't think it's going to be necessary so we're going to check back in a little bit later and show you the progress Okay, here's a little update on where we're standing with the with the bumper. And keep in mind the before picture. Can't really see it very much, but all these little dots on here were terrible, terrible holes. You can hear my fingernails scratching on them. It's just really bad. So what we did is we went pretty aggressive on the sanding, but it's all nice and smooth and they're all gone now so we're going to be primer in this thing after I get the under bumper done and you can see all of the those all those little white spots are all just rock chips galore it was like this somebody was rallying this thing on a gravel road for a thousand years but it's getting there and it's going to be perfect when I'm done so we're going to basically what we're going to do and I'm going to finish sanding this thing and then we're going to primer it in. I wasn't really planning on going this far with it. Um, however, it really needed it because some of this stuff uh, just wouldn't come out otherwise. But we'll keep you informed on the next little step. Alright, we're all sanded up. Ready to shoot some primer on that. Like I said, it's definitely going to be a lot better than what it was. That is for sure.